What could be even more fun than driving the all-new BMW M3? Driving the first ever BMW M3, the E30. So join our very special episode, BMW M3 G80, the all-new model, versus the M3 E30, the very first M3. Tom is joining you here together with AJ and two important questions that we want to answer. Of course, we know the M3 has come a long way, but what do we wish had remained the same, but what are we glad has actually changed for the better? So exterior, interior and driving experience of both vehicles. And at the end of the video, we want to decide which of these cars do we want to take home right here today. Really looking forward to the result. I mean, any in-car enthusiast will enjoy this episode. Just take a look at these two vehicles. It's going to be a blast. This very first M3 generation built from 1986. That's my age group exactly, up to 1990. So this car is essentially me, you know. I think it has aged very, very well. Look at that, the very vehicle here from 87, by the way. Round headlamps, this is the Dayton running light, by the way. And now very interesting, look at that front grille. It's longer in the vertical way than it is in the horizontal. And that we can also see here on the new M3. But of course, I think the new M3 is, is so much more fussy. It's its design. There's so many creases and angles and, and shapes. But the front of the E30 is so simple, straight lines. Even this little brow on the top of the headlamps adds that tiny tinge of menace. I mean, these wheels, if you look at the old car and the new car, the design is quite similar, but this is just 15 inches. The new one, you have 20 in the back and 19 in the front. It's, I mean, it's really incredible. They are so tiny in comparison to the cars nowadays, but I think to the overall design of the vehicle, they are just right sized. I mean, this angular design is the same way here in the side profile. And of course, one of the biggest differences between the two vehicles is weight. 1.3 tons, well, it's 1.7 tons. So 400 kilograms or 880 pounds difference. This will be, of course, having a massive effect on driving. The fuel tank here, by the way, 70 liters instead of 62 liters, so eight liters more if you compare it to the normal 3 Series E30. Quite obvious because it consumes so much more fuel. I really like the spoiler. For me, a sports car, especially an 80 sports car, has to have a spoiler. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, I mean, it's very, very obvious. It does fit to the vehicle, you know, very well integrated, yes. But is it maybe a little bit too much? And also, have you seen the, this, this edge there? Maybe you can, can show it right there. This one, this looks a little bit odd, right? And clearly, no job at all for the Audi Fuel fake exhaust police today, because this is clearly the real deal. And yeah, Jonas, of course, cameraman Jonas, doing the magic today once again. There was this, you know, the shot from this angle there. It was so sexy. Can you show it again? There it is. So the length difference here, about 44 centimeters or 13 inches. This one here longer at 4 meters 80 or 189 inches. The chassis-wise direct comparison would nowadays be the M4, but we still want to do M3 versus M3. That's just cooler. In the second generation, that's where the sedan was firstly available also for the M3. Well, clearly the number of exhaust tips <laughs> they have doubled here in the new generation. Really super massive in the lower area, carbon fiber use. But the spoiler dip is definitely more subtle. I really like the spoiler in the old one, but I do prefer these tail lamps compared to the old ones. They're sleeker. I think the old ones are a bit too boxy and big. And now it's time to listen to the sound. <laughs> sound come from here the three liter inline six by turbo 480 horsepower or 5 for 10 horsepower here in the competition version this one always comes with automatic gearbox and you can also get all-wheel drive however that's not exactly the purest choice no absolutely i would definitely take the standard version even with 480 horsepower that's plenty but you get a six-speed manual and rear wheel drive with a limited slip differential this s58 engine is one of my favorites on sale today it's got so much character it's so energetic and now some famous vehicles like the jaguar e-type for example 
have reversely opening bonnets and also the same case here for the E30. Woo, let's go. Oh yeah, I love a clamshell bonnet. So inside we don't have a six cylinder inline engine, instead we have a four cylinder engine, but 2.3 liters and it still makes 195 horsepower. That comes mated in this case with a five speed manual transmission and rear wheel drive, but 2.3 liters, 195 horsepower, this could go up to 235 kilometers per hour or about 146 miles per hour. And by, back in 1985, I think that was pretty fast. Found something AJ will love, I promise you. I'm hitting the throttle right now and then look, look at that. <laughs> well, look at that. Thanks to Thomas, you can see here we have a cable operated throttle, just really analog. And you can also notice that the actual cylinder banks are tilted to one side. Now BMW claims that this makes the engine run smoother, but also it enables them to mount the engine lower and have a lower center of gravity. Actually, my grandparents owned a BMW E30 in white, not an M3. <laughs> my granny was not a racing driver. But one thing I really remember, and I mean, bringing so many memories back, just listen to that sound already. When I open the door, just this sound. Did you hear that? One more. This plop sound, and then of course the door closing sound as well. It sounds so classic, so awesome. And when I hear this sound, I'm immediately 25 years younger or even more. And look at that interior, slim door. And what I really like best is the slim steering wheel. It, you know, just gives you the feeling this is all manual and purist. You have the steering wheel, analog instruments, three pedals, manual drive, and that's it. You get in the vehicle and you start driving. Get in the vehicle and start driving. You don't need to tell me anything else, Thomas. Let's take a look at this old dashboard. I mean, manual controls, real knobs, real buttons. Oh, feels so good to touch them. I'm kind of missing these things with all the touchscreens in modern cars. And look at this. How cool is that? You have little storage compartments to store your cassette decks. The seating position is fantastic. Again, thanks to that low belt line, the dash is low and you have really tall windows, so great visibility. Well, AJ, when you are driving with your girlfriend, I won't be joining you here in the rear. I mean, yeah, I mean, it hardly works, but it's really something more for two people, this first generation. One of the most fun things here also with the vintage vehicles, using the vintage keys and opening the trunk, like this, <laughs> central locking, and then manually opening, like this. This is so cool, here. Look at that, and this is really different. I mean, so wide. This is really amazing. You can put a lot of things in here. Just you really have to put things in like this, like a top loader washing machine. And of course, another favorite of mine is the trunk closing sound. Listen to that. Ah, isn't that awesome? Now the new M3 interior. Look at that. These bucket seats here, you can get them optionally or here in the competition package. Usually they would look a little bit more normal and sporty. I mean, it's no comparison at all if you look at the old one and the new one. So exterior-wise, what would I have kept from the old vehicle is that angular design on the exterior. I just loved it. Here on the interior, one thing I would have, you know, I would have kept is the simplicity of the interior. This one here is very well done, but I think all the options you have here also make driving a little bit more complicated. You have M1, M2 button on the steering wheel. Then you have here the emote setup, exhaust button. You can fine tune everything, also how the transmission works and so on, especially in here with the automatic gearbox. So on the one hand, it's good to be able to control a lot of things. On the other hand, maybe a little bit over-engineered to me. <laughs> Welcome to the E30, this very first M3 and of course, I mean, it's really an awesome experience. The steering here is very wake, so that's a huge difference to the nowadays vehicle. There's like, there's so much play, hardly any resistance, but I just love this purest manual feeling, thin steering wheel and the gearbox, I mean, it is also somewhat vague in some areas, but I think it's super cool just to have this 
unfiltered experience. You know, well, how is it because as a co-driver? Well, first of all, I love the space in here. It seems really compact on the outside, but because of the thin doors and the really minimal dashboard and lack of airbags or any of that kind of sound deadening kind of stuff. I found it really uh, peculiar that we have the first gear like in the back left. Yeah. You know, and then uh, this is called a, a dog leg gearbox and that's because you know you have two and three right uh, in one line and it's kind of it's kind of designed to be like a track car because you're usually between second and third gear on a racetrack so it's really easy to just go up and down and change between second and third and you never use first gear in a racetrack it's just to get the car rolling so but you got to remember you don't accidentally put it in reverse and smash into the car behind that, you at a traffic light yeah i mean that, that's really cool i mean like uh, i like to switch from second to third and also like just in the city and so on that, that's that's really cool mm -hmm. and for me like really funny is at that point this car was super sporty and it went so fast and so quick at the same time in the acceleration but nowadays this rather feels like a comfortable vehicle and any golf gti or something would be so much sportier you know of course in a nowadays sense and this car is still very capable but this is you know this has come such a long way but tell me more about this engine how does it respond it's a four cylinder manual throttle cable how does that feel yeah i really love this this purest linear feeling mm -hmm. the clutch has a lot of resistance so i mean re recently had some of the new vehicles like the hyundai tucson um where it had like the least responsive clutch ever and now this is like a super responsive clutch you know so you have a good feeling of when you lift your, your foot off the clutch and it you know it comes really towards you and you immediately feel one with the vehicle you know and that's also the reason why you would still go manual you know you have the feeling in your in your in your foot you, have, you know here on your, on your right hand so everything is totally in your control and you can really finely tune and play with throttle and the clutch and that's also where this car comes alive you know when you cruise it a little bit it's maybe like oh you know we're on the sunday cruise but then mm -hmm. you know when when you're going up in the refs that's where this car is really fun you know and yeah yeah, yeah no it wasn't now you're gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the, with, with the second one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes a little bit of getting used to but yeah. i think that's the point you, you live with this for a couple days and you get the hang of that gearbox yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, let's put, put your foot on it come on yeah okay now we can go a little, little bit, bit more. faster let's put back to, to second gear and let's go Woo. the engine sounds go. pretty nice wow, yeah i mean that that's that, that's really cool i mean when you really rev it out um totally adrenaline rush even though it's not i mean it's not super powerful in comparison mm -hmm. to nowadays cars but you know of course there's not the same sound dampening and so on but i have to say i mean now we're driving 70 kilometers an hour there's not too much wind noises so i think it's also they improved the aerodynamics here for the um uh, e30m version mm -hmm. in comparison to the normal three series but i think acoustic wise it's actually quite fine so very interesting. So, uh, Are well, you lost in yeah. the gears again? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. But it's, that's also the fun thing about it, you know? Not, ev not everything has to be perfect. So, I mean, for me, this is so enjoyable and it brings so many memories. Back then I was, you know, on the back seat in, a, in the E30 and watching my grandparents drive. And being able to drive this one now myself is really a dream come true for me. And, man. I think I really have to get one of these, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stepped on the brake a little bit with my left foot. Oh, I feel like I'm, I'm in the 80s and I'm driving a race car. Visibility is fantastic. And you look out the back, you see that big orange wing. That's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome, right? It's totally awesome. Oh, man, AJ. But the steering is, like I said, there's a lot of play in the middle and it's not a fast rack, you know, like in modern sports cars, you have a really fast rack, improves the feeling of agility, but um, it handles itself really well around corners. The pedal box is a bit narrow, but the good news is once you realize not to step on the brake with your left foot when you're pressing the clutch, it's really easy to heel toe like that. And yeah, the gearbox, and this is one thing I always notice with BMW gearboxes is I don't get that very nice solid clunk you know like some of these Japanese gearboxes 
And when I drove the 2002 or the 2002 TII, or when I drove the Z3, so kind of all the eras, the 70s, this the 80s, and that the 90s, this seems to be a, a prevailing characteristic of BMW gearboxes. It's not a very gated feel, but it's still really fun to drive. But I think overall, like you said, it's not a fast car. It's, it's sporty. It's not about speed, it's just about the sensation of speed. You know, the analog controls, the sound of the engine, the vibrations, the smells. It's just about the sensations. Yeah, I think this one here, it feels faster than it actually is. And the new one is faster than it actually feels. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just want to say, oh man, AJ, this might be a very expensive day for me. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can get out of this vehicle without uh, just like, you know, asking the guys at BMW Classic, like, do you have one for me or something? Did you bring your checkbook? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh God, I shouldn't have done this review. <laughs> All right, now in the new M3, first of all, there's light years of difference between the old one and the new one. The engine, the steering, the chassis, it's so much more agile. It's so much more faster. I mean, 510 horsepower compared to what, was it 195? There's no comparison. It's more than twice the amount. I mean, it, it feels relaxed in a way, more, more relaxed in, in the seats. Okay. In but the I mean, in the old one, you mean? In, no, no, not here. I mean, it's like it's a little bit more subtle. I think the seats are sporty, but it's more relaxed to sit here because you're like, and the insulation and so on. But right, I mean, this is like this truly feels like a like a like a machine directly, right? This is definitely a lot more refined for sure, just because of the decades of improvement and sound deadening refinement and so on. But I think that you know the seats are a little bit more. There's a bigger difference between the 3 Series and the M3 here than perhaps the original 3 Series yes. and the original, or the, uh, the, uh, the original M3 and the 3 Series then, because the seats were still similar, you know, it didn't really feel all so different. Here we have this gorgeous M wheel with the M buttons, the sport seats, so this is more purposeful. And also, like, I feel like I'm sitting lower in the car, the visibility is not so great. Uh, to be honest, I prefer the visibility of the old car. Yeah. And. But yeah, you know, when we were talking earlier in the beginning of the episode, what should have stayed the same and what do we like that has changed? I think one thing that should have stayed the same is the visibility. You know, this has grown bulkier, you have a really high bonnet line, and then you have a, a shorter windshield. So I understand it's, it's more cocooned, the A-pillars have to be bigger for crash regulations. But somehow, I, I'm not really feeling connected with the outdoor as much. And I remember driving on the racetrack as well. I didn't like these mirrors too much because they were, they were too big and obstructive, you know? But what I do like that has changed now is the steering, the engine. I think it's just so much more performance. It's his favorite engine, like, of, I think, of all time, right? It's one it's of like... my favorite engines. Not of all time, <laughs> maybe, but definitely the, 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 my favorite engine that you can get today. I mean, just, <laughs> it's instant. Like, we didn't have this kind of a reaction yeah. in the old one, did we? Yeah. It was more like, in the old one, we had, like, the the different elements, like the turning indicators, which had this classic sound, the manual shifting, of course, which can be bought for this one as well. But, of course, the old one is, yeah, somehow just more special than also the, the clutch feedback you have there. Mm -hmm. As you said, like, the sensation of speed, you know? Um, it had more sensation in a way of the individual elements and this year of course on paper just so much sportier you immediately feel it this car tells you like you know 80 like hit the throttle like now do it now <laughs> <laughs> and also check the speed cameras but no. the, you know, the, the original m3 mm -hmm. was super sporty at that time but it doesn't say like you know immediately like Hit it. it. It can also be like yeah. Sunday Cruise as well, you know? I think I think you're absolutely right. And again, this gearbox, I do not like this gearbox. And I said this when we tested the car uh, at the launch event as well, um, that I think you should stick to the standard M3, get the manual transmission. You don't need that extra 30 horsepower. And it's, it's so much more pure. And again, similar to that uh, E30. But 
Yeah. Overall, I, I like the auto gearbox. By the way, I like it. Sorry. You do? Sorry, yeah, do you? I do. I do. I mean, on the highway and I'm stuff. Too, I'm too lazy. You're I'm too, too lazy. lazy. Yeah. Well, the paddle shifters are pretty nice. They're really tall. I like the the, the haptic feedback and the, the tactile feel of them. But on the racetrack, it's a bit sluggish, I think. Yeah. But my heart somehow still still feels happy that this car has this extra okay. performance, and I think I prefer this performance and I will take this performance over um, the older one. Yeah, I mean, stuff like this, you know, you need like a little acceleration boost, just slide in the throttle and it's directly there, you know, that's that's really the thing about the, the new M3 totally, man. My turn. <laughs> you know, this has a really great uh, limited slip differential. You don't need God. four wheel drive. It's there's so much traction yeah. coming out of a corner like that, totally. even when you launch yeah. it into a corner. You should definitely get the rear wheel drive version of this one. And I mean, manual, I mean, you're the manual, totally, totally manual guy. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it with the, with the vintage car, but here for the modern car, I would go with the automatic gearbox because it gives you more performance. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know it's less purious, it's less, less engaging to drive in a way, but I mean, that acceleration in that perfect way, and of course, you know, when we then would even start straight and with launch control and so on, it would be even more extreme. And it's just more relaxing and you can, you know, then use it for different situations and so on. So I would be automatic with a new one, but manual with the vintage one. Oh, there's a BMW Camo car. Is it the iX? The new iX, actually. The new big SUV electric one. Interesting. Yeah. So also caught on camera here, freshly. So, yeah, from, from the exterior, I really have to say, I would get the vintage one with that angular design. I just love that angular design. Interior-wise, mm, yeah, I like the puristic approach of the, of the vintage one. Mm -hmm. Here, of course, you have the modern infotainment system, as you said, you know, right. you can do so much more things with that. And what I really like about the new interior, the refinement, like the build quality of the interior is top notch here with the new generation. That's what I prefer here. Maybe a little bit less controls. So taking something from this purest, uh, yeah, like that, so, uh, like from the, the gesture, gesture control, yeah, yeah, gesture yeah. control there, yeah, you know. So a little bit less controls here and then it would be perfect to me. Yeah, and then driving wise, I mean, this is the sports machine. It's so much fun and like, I mean, look at that slalom characteristic. It's, I'm immediately there. It's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Steering feel, I think they have worked on that now, a little bit at least. Let me just, I'll see how easy I can ease it around here. That's of course also a lot of fun with the rear wheel drive. <laughs> awesome, like the rear came around just a little, little bit. A little bit, yeah. It's, yeah. it's with that ESP and the, and the yeah. M traction control. Just, yeah. you have so much to play with. This also has that drift analyzer. And it really is, like I was playing with this on a drift pad at the other event, and it's so intelligent. It makes anybody feel like they're a freaking Ken Block because it, it does all the, the hard throttle manipulation for you. Yeah. And, you know, coming back to, you know, what we, what should have stayed, uh, stayed the same and what we're glad has changed. One thing is, of course, I like the new interior. For me, I think this is more, um, I'm a millennial, I need my touch screens, but at the same time, Unlike a lot of other cars and other manufacturers, there's still buttons. There's buttons for the volume, there's buttons for the climate control. Thank you, BMW. It's so much easier to manipulate yes, and operate still, these systems. Yeah. yeah, it's good that we still have them, yeah. I think steering-wise, um, obviously the, the, the new generation has a better steering, mm -hmm. uh, steering feel than the vague one of the vintage one, but that's with all vintage cars. But still, with the 3 Series, I think, they have other cars at BMWs that have a better steering feeling and I still wonder uh, up to this day why have they not the best? You love doing that, don't you, Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> uh, before driving this one, I was so sure to pick the vintage one, but now uh, they're really making it tough on us here today. So, so Thomas, what would you, so if you, if you could take the keys of either one home today, what would you drive home? What would you pick? You get to pick only one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is such an amazing experiment and the performance is so extraordinary. 
I mean, clearly, the engineering job that went into this vehicle is really amazing. But I think the old one got me so hooked this time. And the design, this angular design, I think I can't, I can't withstand. I think I have to take the vintage one. And you? Well, that's good for me because you can take that. I'm going to take this. I know the old one has character. It's, 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 a, it's a classic. It's, it's a cult. Uh, it has its own cult following. But I think this is just the, the performance you, you, you expect is there and then it's, there's so much more. Unfortunately, the performance, I know it was great for 1987, but in today's world, it's just not there. It's a cool car, but I would take this. Okay, so we got going to talk to BMW and see if we can take both home then. <laughs> yeah, that's a deal. And of course, I want you guys to state in the comments which one would you take home and also tune in to the Porsche Boxster episode where we did actually the same with the Porsche Boxster, taking the old model and the new model and compare it. It's also a blast. So see you there and of course, see you in the comments section.